All right, so let's get started over here in Xcode. And our first task, and most of this first lesson is going to be dedicated to this, is creating an application that is going to work for both tvOS and iOS uh, formats. Now, I say application, but really what we're doing here is setting up a project that can uh, build to both of those possible targets. And um, ultimately, it creates two different applications in, in iTunes Connect. You're never going to upload a single binary or single application for both tvOS and iOS. It's always going to be two separate um, builds or applications. So let's just start with tvOS, and I'm going to uh, select Game over here. And, and by the way, let's go back one more step here. If you haven't uh, already done this, go to File, New, and then Project. And uh, you'll see the screen right here. So click on Application Next. And what we're going to do is call this... Uh, pinball and then give it uh, something like TV in there okay uh, click on next and obviously match up Swift and Sprite Kit before you do that all right there we go uh, we'll save it to the worst possible place which is the desktop and as soon as you do that uh, what we're gonna do is add a new target so see that little plus sign right there and we're under targets just in our kind of general settings tab over here we're gonna cl click plus and go back over here to iOS application and then select game and doo -doo -doo, this is going to be called pinball and um, uh, let's give this a name like uh, iOS all right again Swift and Sprite kits and uh, just match your screen up to mine there we go all right now once we've done that we do have uh, two separate targets and you'll notice too that we've got two different folders in here they don't actually translate to real folders um, they're just kind of groupings within Xcode uh, but you'll see that we've got a, a little bit of overlap in uh, what got created over here. So we've got the same game scene.swift file, game view controller, and uh, that's one of the things that we're going to be kind of consolidating over here. But uh, where we do want to separate things is going to be in these um, .sks files because these are our actual scene files. So this is where we're going to be dragging out stuff to you know play around with and stuff like that. And you'll notice that um, by default, <laughs> it's kind of an odd one, uh, Apple hasn't kind of updated the scene file for the TV yet to actually have the, the correct size. So, uh, you know, there's only one uh, viewing format for the TV, which is in landscape mode. So go ahead and plug in 1920 by 1080 over there. And uh, that is, of course, your TV size right there. Uh, what we're going to do is create a couple extra scene files dedicated to the iPhone and the iPad. And I do like to kind of keep things as simple as possible. Um, by, you know, in past starter kits, is able to get away with essentially having the same scene file for the iPhone uh, because in a side scroller world, you know, most likely you're going to be going landscape with it. Uh, but here's the kind of departure. Uh, the iPhone, if you're going to play pinball on the iPhone, you don't want it to be like this, okay? It just doesn't make that much sense. You're going to want to play it in portrait mode. Can't do that with the TV, right? And I think the same thing goes for the iPad as well. Most likely, you're going to want to hold that in uh, portrait mode. So when we're laying out our objects, uh, we're going to do that in a portrait orientation. You know, while we're talking about it, let's go back over here to our general settings. And oh, I hate it when the targets do, do this. Get this kind of compressed window over here. Well, we're obviously looking at the iOS one. So let's go ahead and uh, toggle off landscape left and landscape right so that uh, we're just going to be working with uh, portrait. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and just uh, delete out this game scene.sks file, uh, move it to the trash. And what we're going to do is kind of keep one of these files, keep any of these files within this group selected and then go over here to new file once there uh, click on the or go over to the iOS section uh, go to resource and then sprite kit scene and we're gonna call this game scene we're gonna name it identical to this one but what we're gonna do is put in here a phone at the end of it and you want to be sure that the target now is only checked off for your pinball iOS project. So click on create, and we're gonna do the exact same thing one more time. All those same settings should be in there. So sprite get seen. Actually, I just wanna make sure, there we go. Next, and yet again, game scene pad. Be sure that this is checked off. Okay, and these two files should have gotten put uh, into this uh, little grouping over here. The main thing I wanted to avoid was them getting kind of put in outside of any one of these groups and just 
the file ends up getting kind of like in a weird place in the finder in itself. Okay, uh, and then last thing, a little thing we're going to do here with our game scene naming is go over here and call this one, and you can just click right into here, game scene TV, okay? Uh, so code-wise, what we're going to do is basically append in TV, phone, or pad, in the scene file um, depending on which device that we're on and another thing we're going to do is get rid of both our game scene dot swift file and our game view controller for the ios move that to the trash and we're going to make sure that our ios application gets built with our main game scene or only one now for the dot you know game scene and the game uh, view controller so go over here to your Settings yet again. Uh, this time, we're, all right, so we're still in general. What we want to do is go over here to our build phases, and I am uh, I do have the iOS version selected. I know that's kind of hard to see. Wish that would just pop out. All right, that's okay. And uh, so go over here to compile sources. Uh, this is going to be your code. Uh, click on the plus sign, and then you want to make sure that you've got game scene dot swift and game view controller dot swift add those guys in there and then if you want to just kind of check in at any time to see uh, what files are getting added to which target you can always uh, fold down your uh, copy bundle resources and take a look so you can see now we've got our game scene pad game scene phone and if you just want to verify you could go back over here to your other target and you can see that your game scene tv dot sks is in there for the uh, tv version so now we get to do a little bit of programming. Let's go over here to our game view controller and below the super view did load, what we're gonna do is put in here a new variable. There's gonna be a let type variable, so it's not gonna ever change over time. It's just gonna initially be what it is. SKS a name to load. This is gonna be a string type. So it's just a bunch of characters. It's not like an integer or anything like that. And we're gonna put in there game scene. All right, so that's gonna act as our base name for the scene file that we're gonna load up. And our scene files are all these .sks files, TV, phone, pad, right? Okay, then we're gonna actually create a variable. This is gonna be full SKS name to load. And that's gonna be ultimately the full name of the file, all right? But for right now, we're just gonna put in here that it's gonna equal this SKS name to load. And if you want, you can go ahead and copy that and just paste it right over here, all right? So th what this statement does, this if statement, basically just checks to see if that file actually exists, all right? So right now, this would, uh, this would fail, okay? It, but it would fail in a nice, comfortable way. It wouldn't actually crash on you. Uh, what you would see is something like this. Let's put an else statement in. Let's we'll print out, uh, could not find the SKS file. And you can build that up for either the uh, the TV, and if, you, if you're wondering where your iOS stuff is, click over here, and you can see all of your different devices over this way. So it uh, looks like I was probably just using the TV recently. So let me, let me, I'll just make sure that this actually is kind of working so far. I would like to see that output window say could not find the SKS file, because it really should not. Uh, that's an error that you get probably every other time I run for the Apple TV. I should just do it on the actual Apple TV. The simulator loves to spit that out. You'll see it. All right, okay, so here it is. It's actually uh, loading it or running the app. And yes, sure enough, could not find the SKS file. Okay, great, that's a good sign. So now what we're gonna do is add in the TV, phone, or pad based on the actual device that we're on. So we're gonna say if UI device dot current device dot user interface idiom equals my notes have these starting at the iPad so we'll go with the iPad first if that equals pad uh, then what we're gonna do is say if let and here's kind of a tricky one well I'll just put in um, uh, I'll just put in here file for right now that's not what we're gonna end up with but um, I'm gonna say if let file equals game scene file named, and then I'm gonna put in here SKS name to load plus the pad, okay. And then what we're gonna do is put in here full SKS name to load is now gonna equal the SKS name to load 
plus pad at the end of it. All right, so let's explain this property. This is essentially the same line that you get right down here, okay? So, I mean, if I wanted, I could have put in here scene or something like that, but um, th this just checks to see if the file is actually there, that it, it, ex it exists. But in this if statement, I don't actually want to create an instance variable or in a scene based on this file. I just want to know that it exists. And you'll notice over here, it's showing me that uh, this file was never, you know, this variable was never used. Consider replacing it with that. Good idea. Let's do it. Okay. So now I kind of get the benefit of checking this, but I don't have to worry about creating anything unnecessarily. And ultimately, ultimately I get what I wanted, which is this full SKS name to load is going to succeed when it gets down here. And mostly the reason I'm doing that is because you know, I'm, I'm running this three times and inside of each one of these, I don't want to do the same thing that I've got happening down here, right? Okay, so all we have to do now is copy this, change this to an else if statement. Let's make sure they're not on two different lines. And this time around, put in here phone, phone, phone. And you can probably guess what's next else if TV all right so then we're gonna put in here TV TV and each time around what it's doing is just seeing hey you know what is is game scene TV dot SKS in there all right you don't actually have to worry about putting in the dot SKS extension when you test that all right uh, then when we come down here we've got our full SKS data load that gets loaded up and then all this stuff inside of here happens and let's go ahead while we're in here and add in one more SKS view dot shows physics because that's an important one for testing if you want you can go ahead and there put in the that is true right now and we should be able to see each one of these different files now based on the device that we're testing on of course none of these really have anything in them uh, so a quick way to test this would be to just uh, go into the scene file and change the color. All right, so let's go with uh, red for the TV. Save it out. Let's make our phone a blue. And while we're in here, let's put in here uh, the more correct uh, portrait uh, dimensions. And I'm going to do something a little bit crazy that. Uh, might surprise you. I'm going to put in here a width of 1080 and then the height of 920. Okay. Now you'll notice if I were to switch back over here to the TV, that's the exact opposite of what we have in here for the size. All right. We've got a width of 1920 and a height of 1080. Okay. <laughs> this is going to help us to only work with one set of graphics at 1x resolution. And I know someone just hit their fist at the table and was like, no, I'm not working with 1x images because I want them to have that crisp retina display resolution. Well, <laughs> these dimensions, okay, are actually the, basically the, the retina um, 3x size for the iPhone, okay? So if you look up, you know, your iPhone kind of normal dimensions are measured in points. They're uh, 736 by, uh, I can't remember the exact number, but it's roughly, this is now three times bigger than the point size for the iPhone 6 Plus, okay? So what happens is we just take this big scene and we scale it down for the iPhone and it, you don't lose any of the crispy resolution for any of those graphics. So what that means is, you know, a flipper that we, a flipper graphic that we add in here, the ball graphic or whatever, it's gonna, we don't have to worry about changing the sizes based on the particular device, okay? It's gonna be very helpful, all right? Uh, so now that you've done that one, set the scene to blue, let's go over here to our iPad. And again, we've got 1024 by 768. Uh, let's change this one to a, kind of a putrid yellow, just because I hate the fact that this uh, is not the same <laughs> exact uh, ratio as our TV and our iPhone. You can see that we've got 1024 by 768. So let's go ahead and reverse them, 1024. All right, so you've got you know what looks like basically an iPad in uh, portrait mode. We're gonna do the same thing. 
that we did with the other one. But this time around, what we're going to do is just double what these are, 1536, and this is going to be 2048. And you'll notice when we bring in some graphics, they all look about the same relative to the screen size that we've got over here. So uh, that'll be helpful because what we can do is essentially, I mean, we have to lay out the game three different times, but for the most part, all we have to do is just copy and paste. Okay, so we're not worried about changing the actual graphics. The iPad, we might kind of shift some stuff around a little bit, uh, but it's certainly with the TV and the phone, it's really just gonna be a cut and paste job. Now keep in mind too though, our TV is in landscape mode, so programmably what we're gonna have to do is kind of have, you know, have it set up. Let's see if I can build a little square here to demonstrate this. Okay, there we go. So what we're gonna basically do is something like this. Kind of make the ball, you know, if it goes up into this realm, then we're gonna move the camera up here. If it comes back down, we're gonna move the camera back down this way. Alternatively, what we could do is have the camera constantly follow, follow the ball around. And um, we'll set that up as, you know, b both ways because I think there's pros and cons to uh, both of them. I sort of prefer a static view that just goes up and down, but, um, Totally up to you. And it's going to depend on the game. You might not be making pinball, something slightly different. All right, so now what we should be seeing when we run this is the uh, the red screen for the TV. So we'll test that out. And the dreaded iPhone that just, uh, I mean, the dreaded uh, TV simulator that hates running itself. It's like a self-loathing simulator. All right, so it's red. That's all that matters. We do have a little bit of code that's left over in here from the just the, the basic template. And you know what? Let's just go ahead and get rid of it. And I'm going to get rid of that part too. All right, so let's go back over here to our iPad. Stop that from building. And what we want to see from the iPad is it turns that uh, ugly color of green. And it is loading up. All right. And what color do you have for us here? Uh, looks like you threw up on the screen. Perfect. All right. And then finally, uh, let's go over here to any one of our iPhones because they're all building the same file. And if that concept of, you know, taking the, the scene and scaling it down is a little bit foreign to you. Well, that's what's going to happen anyway with all of these iPhones. Okay. So, you know, you if you're working with the iPhone 6 Plus size, you're not making a different scene for all these other iPhones. They're, it's just taking the same scene and scaling it down for each one of them. Okay, all we're doing is just making it a lot bigger than usual. Okay, and then finally, all right, here we go. It's, it's calling back home to get permission to load. All right, there it is. It is it's now a blue screen. So that means that um, each one of our, you know, targets or our devices is picking out the uh, scene that is appropriate to them, which feels like a great stopping place for this video.